I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl. I appreciate you spending some time with us. I'm really happy today to introduce to you Mark Rasmussen, a young man who uh, has such an interesting story and at age 22 uh, has just started in on life. But uh, you were born as a Latter-day Saint, right? Oh, yeah. I was yeah. born into it. So where was that at? Here in Salt Lake? In Utah? Uh, yeah, the Mecca. Um, <laughs> Right here, and uh, I grew up in Riverton for, for half my life, and I moved over to South Jordan. Oh, okay. Unfortunately, my parents split up at a very young age, and so that had to do with it a little bit. But oh, I see. It was, it was a huge shock for me, too, because yeah. I was coming from growing up like in a school in a neighborhood and totally going to something brand new, but <laughs> that's nothing of the shock that happened to me coming out of Mormonism. Oh. Just giving you a little side example. Yeah. So your parents were, were they married in the temple initially? Mm -hmm. But they just had differences and ended up. Right. Any brothers and sisters? Yeah, I got uh, two brothers, two sisters. And where do you fall into that group? I'm the second youngest. Second youngest, okay. And I, I know I look like the youngest. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and so, so you're just active in church? Even Now your parents were split. Did they both stay active in the church? Or? Yeah. Um, for the most part, maybe there was times in their lives where they got a little depressed or things were going hard in their life where yeah. they decided not to go to church for maybe a few months but and things like that. But, but generally, but generally, yeah, they still had those same moral beliefs. And There's certainly never any question that the church was true right. in, in their lives. And, and then as you were growing up, you were baptized at age eight? Yeah. 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 How would you... Remember anything about that? Or? Yeah, the, it was a huge ceremony, so it was like a huge religious rite, or rite, because it was like... There was so much drama on choosing who was going to baptize me. It wasn't more about, oh, this is such a wonderful opportunity. Mark's finally going to accept the Lord. It was more, well, I want Dad to do it. No, I, you got to have Brandt do it. And there was just so much argument. And some, oh. it was just, you know what I'm saying. But yeah, yeah. I, was, I was baptized today. Just kind of like from the Catholic, from Catholicism, baptized as a baby. Yeah. But yeah, yeah that's where I was supposed to have supposedly accepted the Lord. But. Sadly, I didn't, and well, when know, I didn't, no one actually told me, Mark, you got to accept the Lord. Yeah. I always sensed that we were always having people being baptized into the church. I mean, that was the phrase. You know, we don't say as Mormons that we're being baptized to Jesus. We're being baptized into the church, right, to become a member of the church. Which is the law. Yeah. Well, but I mean, that's what we say right. as an eight-year-old, or to our eight-year-olds. Oh, you're going to come and become a member of the church. Mm-hmm. And that's what you're sustained it's all about as. The church. As a it's about the church. the church. Yeah. So what happens? You you start going. You go to mutual, I guess, and and, well, and go to mutual activities. And oh stuff. sure, sure. As far as my activity. Yeah. Yeah. I did everything stuff. that was fun. Yeah. Um, I was really lazy uh, Mormon. I didn't live up to the whole line. There were a couple of commandments. Um, as you know, as I got older, that I decided to dive into. But I was like an idolater. I was self righteous. I always believed like. My good works would overlook the bad. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, for, for, there's a lot for the of most guilt part, with though, that, right? Uh, sure. But for the most part, I was a, a very law-abiding Mormon. I'd go to yeah. church, wear the white shirt, yeah, play my part. But at the end of the day, I was living like two lives, where Jesus would call out and say, "You cannot serve two masters." Sometimes I would sort serve Jesus, which is doing what you're supposed to do in the Mormon church. I was serving Jesus to me. 
Did Oftentimes, you I would do what I just wanted to do. Yeah. Did you really sense that then, that you were kind of living a double standard at times? Well, not at that time. No. But now as a Christian, now, I look, look back, back yeah. and I well, see Well, that's it. what I'm... Because I try to put myself back in how I really was thinking. You you probably did baptisms for the dead. Sure. And in, in the Jordan River Temple or something. Right. And, and how and was that? The experience was awful because I felt guilty the whole time. Why? Um, because I wasn't worthy. I lied to get in there. So I was doing these ordinances. Now again, is that something you felt then or now that you look back? When I was, yeah, no, no, this is looking back. Okay. During the, the, when you were doing it, though, you felt worthy? No. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. Like, I, I felt like I had snuck into the temple and I needed to get out because I wasn't worthy. Like, I got a ticket in, but I didn't deserve the ticket. Like, I stole it. But you can't imagine at your 13, 14 year age that you're that sinful. Sure, but it's just more like, I thought about, wow, I mean, if, if God's real, like, I'm lying to him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I had to do it because there was so much family pressure. Mark, you're 14 by now, come on, do these rites. And I, I never, my mom will say this, I never blessed a sacrament. I had an addiction. I had a sin addiction with many sins. Yeah. And so, but they'd always say, me, yeah, if you're not worthy, don't bless it, because if you're not worthy, so you can... the spell or the blessing won't happen. <laughs> For all that. That's why you have to be worthy to baptize. If you're not worthy, Yeah. Oh no, is the baptism valiant? Is it, did it work? Oh, I see. So that played with a lot of my psyche too on the mission too because that's why I almost went home and I called, uh, for me to repent, I had to call, um, well I had to do a lot. First I had to talk to my companion. I come out and I say, you know, I finally have accepted the Lord. I really want to follow him. Um, like I repented kind of in a way. And it's just kind of like, well, did you tell a mission president? And I'm like, um, no, and then, you know, it took me a while to finally confess to my mission president because he was like my idol. Yeah. And that's how it is for missionaries. Like when you get with mission president, make sure you're on your sharpest behavior, everything's shaved, suits nice, everything's ironed. Because he's he was like my idol. Yeah. I looked up to this guy. He was like my high priest. I go to him for direction and everything that he would tell me. I would take it and wouldn't question a thing. He's I'm, he's he's God to me. Yeah. God talking through him. Where did you go on your mission? Um, I served in. What I used to believe at the time was Zion. I believe it was a very, very oh. special and yeah. chosen place, and I was very valiant in Jackson the pre-earth life. Missouri. Right. Well, <laughs> I, well, first off, when I first got called there, I thought that I was going to Independence or oh. the, uh, you know, the, the large attractions that Mormons have over there in right. Missouri. Independence Jail and sure. Yeah. And that's where I thought I was going. I was like, oh man, this is really, Adam really awesome. Adam Diamond is over there. Yeah, Lord have mercy. A lot of people <laughs> have a very strong relationship with Adam on Diamond. And, and now when I try thinking about it and I know the truth about it, I almost start making fun of it because it's just Adam on Diamond. <laughs> and so... Uh, what were we thinking, huh? But no, the... But that's where you were called on your mission. You must have been excited, though, to go. Or did you feel pressure again? Yeah, I mean, I, well, I was, well, yeah, I will say, I, older, I, was, I was excited. Older siblings, though, went? And sure, everyone went in my family. There has never been, as far as I can account, um, anyone that has not gone on a mission, and everyone that has, as soon as, they live it to the law, as soon as you are 18, or as soon as you do graduate, you go right on a mission. You start thinking about I have never heard another story of someone going at 20 years old. I didn't go till I was 20. Oh. And so... Again, well, well, worthiness, or just... Uh, busy with other things? What was not wanting to do? I'm I'm a type of guy that just uh, you know, especially at the time, not too much now. But I was just a guy that didn't like having to obey all those rules, like being with someone 24/7, all the things that I had to give up. Oh. Um. So it, it was kind of like an experience for me. Eventually, I'm gonna have to accept the Lord, which is uh, or ex ex accept the law, because I, I gotta I gotta serve a mission. Well, did you believe the church was true? At, at age 18, 19? Uh, looking back, not not looking back at it, but then at the time. Yeah. You've, I mean, you were. did you bear your testimony at fast? Yeah, I knew it was true. It was just more of a matter of uh, when did I really want to buy into it because I was in love with um, like the world and other sin, if that makes sense. Oh, there, was yeah. a, there was a time where I was kind of like, you know, I just can't do it yet. I think there's a dual life there, right? what you're saying about being worthy to go into the temple. Sure. You know, but I, yeah, I thought to, that... Um, you know, the truth was 
the most correct religion or church organization. Yeah. And like, I, you know, the Mormon. Believe Joseph just made, Smith it, was yeah, a prophet. It just, and, it just made so much sense. Yeah. Book why, of Mormon. And I think that's why so many people uh, was sold into Joseph Smith. Sure. From this religion, that's what 150 plus years now. Yeah. Did you read the Book of Mormon at all? Oh Did yeah. Did you take seminary? Well, yeah, I was. I, I signed up for seminary, but I probably only attended about 60 to 70 percent. Well, I skipped it a, a lot. Few of those of you out there that do that. I never graduated and oh. it disappointed a lot of people, but hey, I couldn't do it. Yeah. Um, but you believed the church was true and you, again, you said you were excited to go out on a mission. But did you feel pressure from older brothers and sisters? Yeah, and sure. Mom and dad and stuff? Um, yeah, there was, there was pressure. I was always yeah. just, you know, you don't want to be the prodigal son at the same time. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't want to be the, you want to give your parents honor. You want to Give your family honor. So it's one of those things too. That's how a lot of it, the motivation it is for some of the missionaries that are still out there that I've had conversations with. I'm like, man, how do you do it? And it's just, it's all about the honor. Yeah. Now you've got a brother out right now, right? Right. Um, Kevin? Uh, Kevin, yeah. Yeah. What is Kevin written on your thumb there? <laughs> right. I got this, uh, um, this, this one right here. Just because. it washes off, by the way. It's thank you, my friend. He, he totally <laughs> just exposed it. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're fine. Um, I, I keep Kevin on my thumb all the time, just because constantly it reminds me of him, and I can try and pray for him. If that makes sense. Yeah. On his Kevin, mission, yeah, you know yeah. what he's going through, and, and sure, because I've been on the mission. I was right. on a mission about a year ago. I've yeah. seen. I, I only served seven months, but I, I, I pretty much saw it all too. Well, so. So tell us what, I mean, you get out on your mission, you start knocking on doors or holding meetings and sharing your testimony of Jesus and trying to convert people to the church. Mm -hmm. What happens? How did that go? Um, well, at first I was really on fire for it. Like the MTC, I got super on fire for, for the church and the spiritual feeling at the MTC. I'll have friends that have served missions and they'll tell me, there's nothing like that feeling. Really that, gets that you motivated, spirit. doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. Once you, a lot of my, um, you know, they're into uh, emotionalism, and so it's, it's the feeling that that attracts them so much, and it's the feeling that that, that defers truth for them, and so. Yeah. Um, I don't know, but the MTC, I felt it so much, and so I felt that it was just so much more true, and I felt, um, I was so happy to serve God, because I did have a heart for God. One of the big reasons I did. Uh, decided to serve God is just because uh, I suffered for, for so long from an autoimmune disorder. Oh. Very, very sick. Oh. Um, I got to the point where, uh, yeah, if it wasn't for IVs, I, I probably would have passed away. I almost passed away. And so, when eventually when I got like to the point where I was like, not healed, there's no cure for it, unfortunately. Even from people that you can receive miracles from still Jesus. Still live with it. Huh? Yeah, I got to continue to to obey the Spirit, and not, you know, I got to take care of myself, or else I'm going to be sick. But it's kind of like the Holy Spirit is trying to um, show me in a way how to take care of myself. And if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit, I would probably would have lost uh, vital organs in my body. I've oh, had a few right. doctors try to take out an important <laughs> organ, and i got to keep it. And so, uh, hallelujah, praise God, I've been able to get off all uh, you know, prescription drugs from uh, the hospital, like Remicade and things like that. And so, yeah, That's tough. It's um, so yeah, now I feel the best I've ever felt. So was it was it this illness that brought you home early from your mission? Well, that was part of it. Yeah, that was probably thirty yeah. percent. But I used that as the main vocal point because uh, if you come home just for reasons that you doubt or uh, you're depressed or just couldn't do it, yeah, you look like a failure. Right. So tell us what what actually happened to uh, cause you to start taking this different look at Mormonism. Oh. Well, it was kind of a lot of seeds planted. Um, I don't know, just, just going throughout my mission, like it was one thing after another. Like The biggest thing for me was uh, finally accepting um, was grace. Like I, I, thought I really wanted to accept and be worthy. That's what you would say. Yeah. I wanted to be worthy. I never felt worthy because I didn't confess sin to some of the, the high priests, the men. And so... Um, I know, it got to me for a long time, too. You start reading the Bible? I mean, we don't talk about, just as well, a group of missionaries, don't sit around and talk about grace at all. Sure. So do you just start reading the Bible? or what? Well, from the experience of uh, finally feeling like I re was worthy or received grace, I had to uh, tell all my sins to, to my mission president. Okay. And um, he was my idol. That's what I kind of mentioned earlier, I think. But yeah. uh, it was super, super humiliating for me. 
Sure. And, uh, and it actually got so disturbing, like he got out a notepad and started writing down names of girls before or uh, how much did you steal and things like that. Oh. I was just an awful person, you know what I'm saying? Um, and so he wanted the names and then he wanted like dollar amounts and it, it got to a point where, okay, yeah, sure, I'll pay it back. Sure, I can go ahead and be a snitch and confess everything, but I can't remember every single sin that I've committed now. <laughs> like he wants to know, what have you not, what kind what, of sins have you not you confessed to me, yeah. to men, yeah. to your high priest, bishop? And so he said, when you remember, but if that wasn't enough, like after the experience, and he wanted to know detail, um, he just got very descriptive, but after that, you would think that would be enough. He said, uh, okay, I'm going to get back to Salt Lake City and call a council or whatever. Yeah. And by that point, I'm like, you know what, Elder, forget this. I'm not worthy. I do feel like a disgusting, horrible person. I'm just so mad that God is not pleased with me. God has not given me grace. And now he's just very disturbed, and I'm going home. So you and I feel like, like all my works were in vain, and, and yeah. from baptisms or conversions, they probably didn't count because I wasn't worthy. Again to that. And so I started getting to my psyche. So that's why I was like, you know, I just got to go home. I got to go home. When I'm doing this work, I'm not worthy. Yeah. And so finally, like a week goes by, and you know, I end up calling mission president a couple times too, saying, okay, I remember some more sin, because the <laughs> because he left me out and said, okay, if you remember any more, hit me up, and I kid you not. Really. And so. Um, he finally calls me back and he says, you know, um, Salt Lake City says, uh, you have to now call your state president because some of these sins were not under the authority. Of the or, mission president. Right, they're under the authority of, uh, of the state president and your bishop. So now I had to c confess again to uh, mission president, or I'm sorry, state not president, state president. State president yeah. And so I told him the most humiliating things again and then uh, it was even worse because this guy was my friend he was my neighbor he knew my family knew everybody now I'm just telling this guy who you know everything and eventually if I ever become a bad person or um, not apostate but you know less active yeah he'll go oh, he's back into that sin but now right. I'm an apostate or I'm a Christian oh he's gone back into that sin and look how awful he's he's become he's got tattoos he wears crosses not just much much more but, um, well, did I, you understand the concept of grace and what Jesus had actually done for us on the cross? No, I had to, I had to achieve it through works. And that's why I'm trying to explain through yeah. the story. It's, okay. So after I tell him everything, my first mission president said something different to re receive grace. He said... Uh, or forgiveness, you right, mean? Right, to be worthy. Right. He said, uh, you know, pay back everything and just a couple more things that I got to do. I'm like, all right, fine, I'll do it. And so... Uh, state president said um, a different kind of way to receive, and that was the first. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Forgiveness. Some, or you, I'm getting two answers here, meaning we got two different kind of. I won't say gods, but just kind of like. Hold on a sec. <laughs> two different ways of like two different resolving roles. these problems. Yeah. And so he's like, "Oh, don't worry about it. You know, insurance will cover it." Um, but then he said this to me, like, "If that wasn't enough, he says the more good works that you do, uh, eventually your rag will be cleansed." So the longer you stay on your mission, the more converts, yeah. your ride will be more cleansed. Yeah. And so that really got to me. And so me and my uh, companion, uh, I miss him so dearly. I really just want to hang out with him. But um, You started working really hard to... Oh, I'm yeah, cool. sure. We, we ended up, uh, you know, a lot of people were zealous, but I, I had a rock star companion who, who, who taught me a lot. And now I've, what I've learned from him, I'm now using it as a Christian. Um, so a, a big shout out to him. But... Um, I don't know. I just have this, you know, this 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 missionary mentality still, but it's just now it's kind of it's. A, I gotta be honest. It's a different gospel. Well, so what made you start seeing Mormonism for what it was and what Christianity is? Oh, yeah. It, it all started kind of on my mission, and then so um, there were just big things to questioning off. And then all of a sudden, during my mission, uh, I was promised by uh, you know former past bishops. Uh, saying, you know, you're going to be healed the more, you know, you go on a mission. And so the, I started getting the sick. The autoimmune disease, sure. yeah. Yeah, it started coming back and started flaring up. And so not only that, though, but I started experiencing, um, as time went on, just, just more mental, um, it, like depression, anxiety, depression, stress, yeah. sometimes insomnia. And so a lot of times uh, what I would do, I would eat a lot. It would bring me a lot of comfort and joy. That would keep me motivated to go throughout the day and, to be honest with you, I gained over 20 pounds. I was very unhealthy, and a lot of people made 
the, uh, you know, doubt it, but oh, those of us are Mormons, we know it. You gain the most weight ever in your life on your mission. Why? Because a lot of them are very depressed. And they feel like they can't go like me. When I tried leaving, it was, no, you, you have to, you, know, you, have to, you have to do it, you have to be celestialized. You're going to, everyone's going to look down on you. You're going to always regret it. Yeah. And so by the end of it, I just decided to, to try and chug, chug along. But by the time I really started to now doubt what this faith that I was teaching to people, um, that's where I kind of wanted to kind of get home and find out for what I know for myself because of the, one of the biggest things that made me really truly question it. And then I started becoming like spiritually, I don't know, that's why I kind of my born again experience started happening, yeah. when was, was the word of wisdom. Um, I'll get to it later, but it's it kind of started like, I would say I was born again very, very shortly after my mission. Started when, I, when I got home, yeah, got I, home. I, I finally understood the gospel and I got to the point where it's like, okay, do you accept me as Lord and Savior? I did, and then... Well, did somebody teach you that? Did you just start reading the Bible? Did it just come right. into your heart that Jesus had actually done all of this payment for you on the cross? How, how did this happen? When I had like a, a so much more supernatural testimony for God and deity. Yeah. Um, and then also, I don't know, just learning like supernatural wisdom and understanding, you know that you had only got it from God or something of a higher, I don't know, deity. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, and so then, uh, I mean, I got home from my mission and then I ended up breaking my leg and I was thinking about playing college sports. Uh, but it let me super, super down, super depressed, and I, I kind of made a decision where um, I wanted to get super close to God, and so I read the Bible uh, for itself, and at this time, too, I had so much doubt in Thomas S. Monson, and um, just a lot of, a lot of other church authorities. A lot authority. of questions in your mind, I guess. Right, and so I kind of read the Bible for the first time uh, supernaturally and, and seeking for truth, and it felt like God was uh, finally had my attention. And I started understanding, getting to know the Lord, and then the fear of God got into me. Really? It, it, it got my freaking butt to finally repent. Yeah. Uh, when Jesus started talking about, um, started talking about the law and repentance and how important it is. And you re you never under really understood that as a. I never feared God. I always just thought I was a I was an idolater. I was self righteous. I thought. You were just trying to work your way to heaven. Sure, and yeah. I mean there was things that I picked and chose what I wanted to believe as well. I was an idolater. I I I, I, I like. There were still things that I knew were sin, but I was keeping everything else. And apart from all my good works, God would not uh, um, condemn me. Because yeah. God would go, no, this is a good person. <laughs> but then you start reading the Bible, and you start learning, and you start knowing truth. Uh, you start repenting, and it's like, you know, you're, you're, a, you know, you're nothing to God. <laughs> so, so was there one day or experience that just... Okay, backed you up and you yeah, said Yeah, it okay. probably was. It was kind of like, it felt like a week, but I was just learning so much. And I was so excited with the Word of God. And so I started finally um, getting to know Jesus Christ on a personal level. Yeah. Really getting a relationship with Him. And we just don't get that, do we, as Mormons and missionaries? No, I never had it. I always thought I did. I always thought that I knew God by my works, right. pleasing Him. Right. But then, you know, with this scripture is super important. I'll, I'll shout out to my LDS friends. Is a lot of people at that last day is going to say, "Lord, Lord, we have performed so many good works in Thy name. Yeah. We, you know, we've we've gone to the temple. We've we do uh, you know, tithing uh, Sabbath day. Yeah, uh, I'm a good person. Right. When the Lord said, "Depart from me," I never knew you, unfortunately. And um, there's no one and good. We there's not one that good. Now, right? <laughs> right. I, I actually understand that I'm a I'm a wretch. I'm a sinner. Right. And the only thing that, that can save me is the blood of Jesus Christ and my faith alone. Yeah. I never knew that either. I thought I was really good. Sure. And working my way. I thought God was so right. pleased with my works, but our works are like filthy rags before the yeah. Creator. Yeah. And at the time, too, I believed that I was going to become a God. Yeah. And that there, I mean, it's a huge debate in theology that Mormons will talk about inside the religion. Right. That they but how many God. gods? How yeah. many earths? Yeah. Heavenly Mother? I know. Many Heavenly Mothers. Jesus had wives. And we can go into start exposing the, the, the truth yeah. about Mormonism, but this is more particularly just trying to yeah. give well, so, a brief testimony yeah, in 30 well, minutes. This, it's wonderful. And I noticed <laughs> your your shirt here and crosses. and Yes. Um, so you're sold out for I, Jesus. Right. You know, i got to show people that I'm still prideful and I still think that I'm a cool guy. Um, <laughs> I want to show them that, you know, I want to give the glory to Jesus Christ. Uh, and he's that's he's totally now my idol, right? My idol used to be Joseph Smith. I gotta be honest with you guys. I'm not saying your idol's Joseph Smith. That's a Mormon. No, 
I'm sure many Mormons, like I have really great Mormon friends uh, still, um, you know, like out in Missouri that have a, have a testimony or have, or have, a, or have a relationship. With Jesus but, or with right. you? Or? And so I try to um, just try to share it, that you can still be, still be yourself. You can be real, but you can still have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Yeah. And so it's actually a huge attraction for uh, a and lot do of you feel I give all the glory to Jesus. Do you feel a freedom now or a lack of guilt that you didn't have before? Do you, oh yeah, I feel like I've, I've been that? set free. Once you know the truth, you will be set free. And That's the, 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 when the Bible finally talks about the joy of the Lord, I never understood it because I never right. had it. We never understood that. But now I've received that, 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 that gateway, that door that's, that's so narrow. I mean, broad is the way that's to the destruction, but straight and narrow is the way that leads to eternal life. And, and very truth, few find it. And truth will set us free. Amen. And so when I found that out, I mean, I decided to lay down my life for him. I was, I was no longer led by my flesh. I, I had a new heart. I was born again. I had uh, desires that wanted to please God, not myself. Well, why do you think LDS people are not unable to come to where we've come to, where you've come to? What is it that keeps them? Is um, it just so emotionalism. emotionalism? It's the pride. It's fast and um, testimony meetings. Sure, it's 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 the feelings, I and mean, that's what I thought too. It's all about yeah. Uh, the spirit's testifying to you um, from that good feeling that you're feeling, that spiritual feeling. But the Jehovah's Witnesses feel the same feeling. Yeah. The Muslims, the Moonies, the Everybody we can keep going that. on. Yeah. Um, and so what I say is, we go by the manual. That's the facts. And the, and the Bible actually, Paul warns about. That in particular, it says there's many false prophets. Right. Test the spirits. Yeah. Find out if it's true. Because there's many, many spiritual feelings, and those are and then those they, spiritual feelings are lying to you. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to tell you. It, it is a, um, a feeling that I felt multiple, multiple times, but now I can totally reverse and say, okay, LDS, I have that feeling now towards Christianity. But I'm not trying to tell you that's why I think it's true. I'm not telling you I think it's true because I feel like it's true. Yeah. I'm showing you right here in the Word of God. And trusting the Bible that we never right. Did I'm putting before. my faith alone in the Word of God, the Bible, yeah. and instead of the hands of a Joseph Smith, who was, unfortunately, I just got to say the facts was was a con man. Before the Mormon religion, he was arrested for fraud and being a con. Well, and now all the stuff with the polygamy and the essays and the seer stone and those things. Are yeah. Just... Once I found out, to be honest with you, once I found out the truth, I literally almost vomited. Did you? Because. Joseph Smith was my idol. He was my yeah. hero. I always thought Joseph Smith was that man in the movie. Yeah. But once I found out the, who Joseph Smith really was, and then I saw his picture, and I was like, this is all a fraud. This is Mark, a lie. Mark, you're not going to believe it, but our time's gone. Oh, my friend, we can keep going. I I'm know. <laughs> well, I hey, appreciate you so much, and it was a wonderful story. Yeah, i got to thank you again, brother. Great young man, and I hope, I wish you the best in life. I'm sure you're out there uh, uh, doing such a great work for the Lord. and. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you on another episode.